I have always been fascinated with Abraham and his relationship with God. How did he know God? Before any scriptures were written? Before Jesus? How did he know what he heard was God's voice? We know that God does not speak in a voice like ours. Perhaps Abraham experienced a kind of hearing that came from deep inside him and all around, something like the way indigenous people describe their experience. Whatever it was that Abraham experienced, we do have these amazing stories about him, which invite us to wonder about all these things. His story begins with him hearing God calling him to leave his country and his father's house, the place where he was born, and go to a new place. The voice of God was asking Abraham to do something very difficult and boundary-breaking. It was a time in history when one's connection to one's tribe was extremely important. Yet, the story says that Abraham heard God say, Go, and the story says, He went, with the assurance of God's blessing as he went. He took his wife Sarah and his whole household of slaves and servants and livestock. Of course, Abraham had times of doubt, and he had times when he was so afraid he did things that were not very admirable. He told the king of Egypt that his wife, Sarah, was his sister. Now Sarah was very beautiful and desirable, so the king took her into his household to be his wife. Then it came to the king's, uh, king's attention that this beautiful woman was actually Abraham's wife, not his sister. The king was very angry and called Abraham and told him to take his wife and leave immediately. I can just hear Sarah saying, Really, Abraham, did your God tell you to do that too? Abraham had to learn to discern when he was responding to the voice of his own fear and when he was truly hearing God. But... Through thick and thin, the stories do tell us that God was always with him. Sometimes there were moments when he listened to other people rather than his own better judgment. He allowed Sarah to convince him that since they had not had a child together, God's promise could maybe just as easily be fulfilled by a child conceived with her slave girl, Hagar. That didn't turn out so well as we heard last week. It seems that the promise God made to Abraham wasn't just for him. It included his wife, Sarah, as well. After Sarah gave birth to her own son, Isaac, Ishmael and his mother were cruelly banished from the household of Abraham. We are told that God went with them. Somehow the God of Abraham and Sarah was also the god of Hagar. And the story teaches us to expand our own ideas about God. We learn that God works with our mistakes. Today we have a story of Abraham hearing God speak again. He hears God say, Go up the mountain, take your son Isaac with you, and sacrifice him to me. In other words, Take the most precious thing in your life that has brought joy and laughter to your old age, your beloved son Isaac. Take him and kill him as a sacrifice for me. Unbelievable. Horrible. Is this truly God speaking? Or is this a leading from somewhere else, some part of Abraham that knew he had stopped trusting and loving God and was placing all his love and trust in his son. Perhaps Abraham was no longer open to the leading of God. The story says that God needed to test him. 
History tells us that Abraham and Sarah were surrounded with people who practiced child sacrifice and that this might have led Abraham, with all his strong emotions, to feel that he needed to sacrifice his son. Perhaps he began to understand intuitively that he was placing too much trust in Isaac and not enough in God. Perhaps the idea of sacrifice was the only way Abraham knew to return to God. Who knows? What we do know is that the very idea of the sacrifice of a child, a beloved son, is abhorrent to us. In fact, there are many texts in the Hebrew scriptures that forbid it. So is this a story of an abuse of God, a misguided Abraham, religious violence at its worst? Is Abraham a madman, or is he a perfect example of trust in God? It's a very difficult story to be sure. It also makes a strong claim on us as Christians. We are called to recognize that all we have, even our own lives and those of the ones most dear to us, belong ultimately to God, who gave them to us in the first place. The story of the sacrifice of Isaac, which almost happened, assures us that God will provide the goat in the bushes and that God will be present in our darkest moments. And, of course, as generations of Christian interpreters have seen it, this story foreshadows the story that forms the foundation of Christian faith, the story of the death and resurrection of a beloved son, son of Abraham, son of David, son of God. So many questions are aroused about the way we understand what happened to Jesus. Was his death truly a sacrifice to the God of Abraham? Or is there another way to understand how Jesus' death saves us? I wonder, do you?